Garden City cannot f with you. We should run the football for 400 yards. Defensively, they cannot f cover you. Val Mays can cover you, CJ? Oh, no. That's their starting corner. We cut them. F these dudes, man. I guarantee that motherfucker don't want to see me at the 50 either. But are you is going to step up and rise to the challenge and beat the out of the defending champ at our place so we can win nine in a row and win this mother on Netflix. Straight up. So Last Chance You season three has finally come and the majority of us have already seen the full season. If you're like me, you probably set aside eight to 10 hours to sit there and take in the entire season all at once. If you haven't seen it as of yet and you're watching this, there may be a few minor spoilers, but you can still watch this to maybe help you decide if you wanna check out season three or not. Everybody else that's diehard fans like myself, you know what time it is, baby. It's time to ruthlessly compare this season to seasons one and two, y'all know how we do it. All right, all right, not exactly, but I will be ranking them from best to worst in this video, so make sure you stay in tune for that. Now, of course, I'll be discussing why I feel that way and supporting everything that I say, but I want y'all to let me know in the comments section, how do you rank the seasons? Now, I'm gonna be breaking down all the major characters in a future video that's probably gonna drop in the next day or two. That was initially gonna be a part of this video, but dog, it's so much information that I felt, you know what, this should probably be a separate video altogether because I don't want this joint to be 30 minutes long. We had a ton of interesting characters and I got a lot to say about each one. But in this video, I'm gonna be giving a brief overview slash review of Last Chance You season three. Yeah. So season three started out hot out the gate. Expectations were high and I think they did a phenomenal job of opening up with the cow scene. Is that a cow bro? Is that a cow? Bro, what is Who wanna eat tonight? Who's this guy? He got a gun, homie? Oh, sh who the hell is that? Who's the guy with the gun, man? The cow over there. Oh. Coach, I know about the cow. The guy has a <laughs> gun. Hey, get him over there, Coach. Coach, Keith, get him in the end zone. Is this what about to shoot him? Hey, don't shoot the Hey, man, don't shoot the cow. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hell no. Is that legal? Now, true enough, this is gonna be a little bit of a spoiler. This is not a major plot point though. This is something funny and it happens pretty much right out the bat when you start the season. The cow scene at the beginning does an amazing job of kind of breaking the ice and getting you to relax a bit because again, we've been waiting on this. Expectations are high and it represents a lot to me. Like I broke this cow scene down way more than I shoulda. First off, it's just funny just to thought that, yo, we're in football practice and randomly, there's a cow on the loose. Not only is there a cow on the loose, but it's a dude chasing him with what looks to be a damn gun. And you see all these hardcore football players who do all these curves and we go in, you know what I'm saying? Everybody like, no, don't shoot the cow, bro. FYI, I don't really like to be around animals, but I don't want them hurt. So I was one of them dudes too, like, come on, bro, don't shoot the cow. So it starts out and it's very funny just to see the cow and the dude chasing the cow. Then it switches, cause it's like, yo, he's got a gun. He's gonna kill the cow. Like it gets heavy real quick. Then he shoots it and it's a tranquilizer which just offers a ton of levity to the whole situation. So right there in that little cow scene, it's like, how many emotions did you just go through? Like I broke this cow scene down way more than I shoulda. I also love how they allowed Coach Brown and the other characters to reference season one and season two. This is something that they could have easily just edited out, but all the references to the first two seasons kind of put you in the mind of like a Deadpool comic or movie, you know what I'm saying? So when Coach Brown look at the camera like, I'm Brittany Wagner, goddamn, you know what I'm saying? Like that was hilarious, bro. Just like seasons one and season two, you realize how important football is just to people in this country. You got a small town there, they have a lot of pride, but they put so much stock into their football team being good and was constantly supporting them, even though it was complete trash for years. And it was dope to go to a school that wasn't already a powerhouse 
and kind of witness that thing being built. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like you got two choices on the NCAA football game. You could pick that powerhouse school and try to maintain that, or you could pick a school that's absolutely horrible and try to build that. So we got the latter in this season. And I know everybody loves a winner, but I really love underdogs and I love like those build up type of stories. The dysfunction was on full display. This team is extremely dysfunctional, just like EMCC. Now I know these are junior colleges and these are a bunch of high end players who've been kicked out of their schools. But I do wonder to what extent, especially like when you see the spats between the coaches, to what extent are larger programs dysfunctional. I'm sure programs like Alabama are pretty buttoned up, but I'm pretty sure it's a couple SEC schools that are also dysfunctional. Like I couldn't help, but the whole time I was watching, just wondering what an unfiltered look, a unfiltered extended look into a D1 program would look like. Maybe at some point last year, you could make that happen. I think that would be pretty dope. And I know there's some key differences, but I bet it's a little bit more similar than we probably think. So overall, I really enjoyed the season. How does it stack up the seasons one and two? Well, let's discuss. Let's be honest. Season one was our first foray into this series and many of our first in-depth look at Juco football. Like y'all might not remember this, but that dude at the beginning of season one who's like, guys from division one who had been in trouble fails a drug test flunks out of school who disappeared for a couple years and then show up again at alabama or the new england patriots this is where they come from that dude set the damn tone bro he really set the tone for those of y'all who are unaware like a few weeks before season three dropped i did a poll and let people vote on their favorite characters their top 10 characters from last chance you season one and season two the top three characters on the list are all from season one and it wasn't the top three by a little bit they ran away with it so that says a lot about the impact of the first season so it's always gonna be hard to top that first one get rich or die trying reasonable doubt like y'all get it everything goes into that first one and there's nothing to compare it to so the audience just takes it for what it is but from that point on everything else will be compared to the first one, which in turn makes it tough for every season after that now season two is pretty good as well i love some of the characters like tim bonner chauncey deandre but i will not lie I, watching the Isaiah thing was very tough for me during season two because you could see it happening but you couldn't intervene and it seems like nobody around them saw it either now that's not an indictment of the show they did their job their job is to capture what's happening and then deliver that content to you in the most unfiltered way possible that's exactly what they did and there's some great moments in season two i mean chauncey's song for my mama was hard i mean dakota allen in season two was amazing and you think about it like if somebody like vj miller what if he was a part of season three wouldn't it have been a completely different thing for for that character because every time a league was tripping instead of having to put in brandon b you could put in vj that's a different that's a whole different thing i gotta say this right now this ain't the character episode that's how it's coming soon but bro brandon b the way he was portrayed at least he was the worst backup quarterback of the series bro he was the only bad backup that we had because in the first season like depending on how you look at it either jf3 or wyatt was the backup i mean i really don't remember who started more games or whatever like that but regardless either one of those guys is a pretty damn good backup bj was a pretty damn good backup in season two but brandon bro he was struggling out there he was struggling out there i heard he i heard he went to boise state though so you know good on him but like I said, man, season two was pretty good as well. Now, season three. Season three gives you, in my opinion, every single thing that season one gives you, with the exception, God damn it, with the exception of like this being your first experience with Last Chance You. That's like the only thing you didn't get that you got from season one, in my opinion. And for some people, that's the only thing that matters. But not for me, I'm looking deeper. The change of scenery was a bold move, but a necessary one. Coach Brown, in many ways, is a better version 
of Buddy Steven. He's loud, he's outspoken, he curses every other word, and his major strengths as a coach were on display along with his major weaknesses. We'll get more into those in the next video. Miss Latanya did a great job of bringing some heart to the series. And she did it while not trying to emulate Brittany Wagner, who was amazing. But Miss Latanya had her own beliefs. She had her own way of going about things. And she believed deeply in education and, and was giving everything she had to help as many of these cats as she could. And it was dope because not all of these guys' stories were tragic. Obviously, there were a few. But you had people like Carlos Thompson, who we saw turn the corner during the show. And he was honestly my favorite character throughout the entire thing. Then you had characters like Malik Henry, who kind of repeated the same patterns over and over. And, you know, he's a bit of a mystery as to exactly what's going on there, but it's something that's obviously much deeper than football. Rakeem Boyd may be the most talented player we've seen throughout the entire series. He's definitely the best skill player for sure. And not only that, but he's not a troublemaker. Dude had his head on straight, so he was able to go back D1. Then there's Bobby Bruce. <sighs> Bobby Bruce might have to get his own video, man, but I am gonna talk about him in the initial player breakdown video. Like I said, it was a good season. Yo, the Garden City game was so dope. Like the beef between the coaches was so real. And I like how they gave you both sides and kind of built it up like a boxing match or maybe a UFC match, actually. I choked the fuck out of the dude because when I left there for a fucking reason. All in all, I really enjoyed the season. I want to send another huge shout out to Last Chance You for shouting your boy out in the credits. A major accomplishment for me, it still feels amazing. But even though I was credited on this one, I still cannot rank this as the top season. Here are my rankings. Season one is still the king. I explained all the reasons why earlier in the video, so you may have known where I was going here. But season one still is and may forever be the GOAT Last Chance You season. Now for the two spot, Season three is gonna slide in to the number two spot for me. Again, I really, really enjoyed this series. I couldn't put it in number one just because that first season was so groundbreaking, but I feel like it's definitely deserving of the number two spot, which would mean season two is coming in in third place. Now, I didn't count the uh, life after EMCC, like that last episode right there for a couple reasons. Number one, it's not a season, it's just one episode. And I felt like it's more of a continuation, like almost an addition to the first and second season. It would really go in a category with those, but just as a later addition to catch you up on all the players. But it was a great episode. It was good seeing, you know, the first half of it, it was so good seeing Ali, man, and just how much he's matured, you feel me? These cats that you're growing up, man. And that's what I always be saying in these videos, like, bro, these dudes is kids. You know what I'm saying? And they in this, they on Netflix, they doing all this stuff, and they got a camera on them. And most people in the comment section understand that and are very supportive. But it's always a few cats in the comments that oh, they're just thugs and they're, they're you know what I mean? But it's like, yo, if I had a camera on you for that long, when you was that age, like, I'm so curious to see what we would have captured. Because if we had it on me, dog, you would have captured some crazy sh Like, for real. But I think because there was no camera, a lot of people forget. They forget all the BS they did and all the dumb decisions they made. And then they judge people, man. But anyway, I'm getting off topic. Like I said, it was dope seeing how much Ali has grown up, man. We know what's going on with JF3. It was great seeing how well... Miss Brittany Wagner has been doing for herself. One disappointment, man, I was really hoping to hear from DJ Law. I was really hoping to hear from DJ Law. I'm sure they reached out to him, bro. DJ Hardcat to just run down, bro. He Hardcat to run down, man. And then there's the last 30 minutes of the episode. Uh, you know, 30 minutes or so. Probably not exactly 30, but you know what I mean. And that is the Isaiah Wright situation, man. Some of the saddest TV, you know what I'm saying, that you're gonna watch. It's, uh, it's a sad situation, man on both ends, you know, somebody lost their life. And um, and that's the thing you have to always remember in this is that somebody did lose their life, man. And a little kid lost his dad and somebody, you know what I mean? Like it's, you know, that lady lost her son. 
is, is, is tough, bro. Hopefully that works itself out in the best way possible, whatever that is. I have no idea what that is, but we'll have to see, man. All in all, though, I enjoyed season three quite a lot, man. Again, I got it ranking in second place behind season one. Y'all let me know how y'all felt about it in the comment section. Like, how did you feel about the season overall and where would you rank it? And I'm about to go out of town. I got a big project coming up, but I'm going to be trying to knock out the video, breaking down all the characters before I leave so that I can leave that for y'all. Other than that, let me know what are the last chance you videos y'all want to see from me. Click the thumbs up button, subscribe if you're brand new, and I'm gonna holler at y'all next time. One. Yeah.